this project, I started with the plastic mini wavy bowls from the wedding section of Dollar Tree by removing the packaging so I can kind of check out the wavy rim here. I was thinking that because the waves, these would be a little difficult to glue together, but there was really nothing to it. So I just began gluing these together side by side, forming a circle. And I decided I needed something to kind of use as a guide so I could make a perfect circle. So I grabbed a wire wreath. Now the fourth ring on this wire wreath is actually missing so i used the third ring as a guide for this particular shape and size once i was finished with the first row i just started stacking up my second row gluing these directly on top and side by side as i was you know going up and around so i was having to wait a good bit for the glue to grab and dry so later i decided to use some masking tape so i could go a lot faster Basically, I just kept gluing these uh, side by side, just gluing, you know, the wavy bowls until I got to my fourth row. And that's when I decided that this would be a good height for my lampshade. Now, obviously, you can make your square, you can make it bigger, taller, smaller, shorter. It's all according to whatever size lamp you're wanting to make. But if you are liking this particular shape and size, I used 14 bowls on each row stacked for high. Now here is where the magic happens. So you saw the wavy rim on the bowl. You know what else has the same sort of wave? The silver mini spoons from the wedding section of Dollar Tree. So here's where the two waves kind of come together, giving this design a gorgeous chrome finish. For this part, I just snap the little spoons off of the handles and I pop about three off at a time just so I can kind of knock them out pretty quick. And then I go back and I size the handles to fit along the rim of the bowl. Now I'm making my handles a little bit short because I want to leave enough room in each corner to decorate. But what I do is I mark one of the ravy uh, bowls with a hot knife. I make a mark on it to use that as a guide so I know where to cut each one of my handles. I noticed when I use scissors to cut the handles, the, you know, the plastic actually cracks. That's why I use the hot knife. And I just make a little dent with my hot knife and I pop them off. I prep several of these at a time and then I just start gluing these on each rim up and down and all around the lampshade. The neatest thing about this pattern is how it all comes together. For example, I have the thinnest part of the handles facing each other at one of the corners they these are going up and down and at this particular corner and then the other direction the handles are facing each other by the widest part now in any direction from here whether you want to work your way up or you want to work your way down you just do your next set in the opposite direction and this pattern comes together all the way around effortlessly it's just it's really really easy to do and it's just really neat how it all comes together I love it. after it's all chromed out next I take some flower bling and I cut the flowers off of the little threads into single little pieces and once I have a good pile of them I just begin to glue one in each corner of the bowls and I'll again work my way up and down and all the way around until every corner is completely filled out And this is where I think the project really starts looking good. And honestly, I didn't have any plans to do anything else to this shade until I put a light in it. And I thought it was just entirely too bright and there was really nothing shade about it. So um, to kind of sort of tint or tone down the brightness, I started adding Mod Podge and silver glitter in the bottom of each square. Now everything was moving really, really fast up until I got to this part. So I just want to suggest spray painting this with something like frosted spray paint, like you would use on windows if you don't want to spend a lot of time on this part of course you know adding mod podge and glitter there's really nothing to it it's pretty simple but here's the thing you can see your brush strokes um when the light's behind it with just one coat so you have to do this three times one big key to this is using masking tape so you know where you started and they'll likely be dry by the time you work your way back around to the tape
I applied my top coat of just Mod Podge to seal the glitter. Then I took it outside my little shed building, which was off the glitter. And how I'm doing this, I'm using just a, a couple of dry paint brushes that have super incredibly super soft bristles so i just ran their bristles from front to back getting in all the cracks and i dusted it until there was absolutely no more glitter coming from the shade so now it is time for the pole and the base and it's important here to create a heavy platform to support this lampshade and using the mop handle here actually from the fire pit project and a terrarium bowl from the floral section of dollar tree and a small bowl just one from this three pack which came from the kitchen aisle of dollar tree i spray painted all these silver and then i placed the terrarium bowl upside down so i could trace out the pole in the center of the bowl and then i traced out that line again with a hot knife just so i could cut the hole now the easiest way to do this is to hold your hot knife completely still with one hand and twist the bowl around and around with your other and it'll make a full complete circle a perfect circle another really neat thing here is if you use the same materials you can just trace out a nickel so as you can see here the hole i made is the exact same size as a nickel but I only use that as a guide though because my hole is just a tad bit bigger than i would have liked so cut your line on the inside of the outline this next part i was sure to lay down plenty of newspaper so cleaning would be a breeze i grabbed a bag of sand from dollar tree i have some spackling and i mix these together in a small kitchen bowl it didn't have anywhere near enough spackling but I thought I would give it a try anyway. <laughs> now the sand with the spackling kind of packed down really well. It's really hard. But I knew the middle was, you know, the middle had a lot of sand that was dry. So to wet that, I used Mod Podge. Now for real, for real, for real, I added entirely too much Mod Podge. This was a new bottle and it just like all came out at one time. <laughs> so if you do this, I totally recommend using a lot less Mod Podge. Or you can use more spackling. Just so your mixture is thicker so i add a good bit of clear adhesive around the rim of the kitchen bowl or was filming um apparently it wasn't but trust me when i say i added a ton of glue and then i add a ton of hot glue for that instant hold next i place the terrarium bowl on top of the sand bowl where both bowls are like sitting flat on the ground you don't want the terrarium bowl supporting the weight of the sand bowl at all this is just a cosmetic cover you can just stick your mop handle through the hole cut a hole in the center of several pieces of heavy duty duct tape to use as a gasket or a seal um holding the you're covering the hole between the hole or the pole and the bowl and the hole goodness <laughs> okay so i used a piece of duct tape to kind of seal that hole between the pole and the bowl and i cut several pieces up like this and i add a ton of glue and i do this in layers and you know i have like glue and then tape and i i just keep doing that and i form a complete tight seal and then i spray paint that area to match now to crank you can kind of hear how heavy it is plus i'll show you what the bottom of this looks like create a cosmetic cover for that area i use one of the plastic wine glasses from the wedding section of dollar tree and these come in a pack of six i spray painted this one silver to match as well and i cut the stem off with my hot knife so it'll slide over the pole and cup the heavily glued and taped area and i also add a napkin ring holder on top of that just for looks and then i let it sit for 24 hours now to connect everything together i use a pair of tongs from the wedding section of dollar tree i just cut this pair in half giving me two separate handles and then i cut each one to fit inside of my lampshade now this takes a couple of tries but once i get one to custom fit the second one's much easier and then i take one of the wine glasses and mark it to uh, custom fit the handles including the little indentions on the back of the tongs so i marked that area with a hot knife and i just begin to shape the wine glass mm -hmm. 
after um, I had one of the wine glasses cut, then I could stack three more plastic wine glasses together and I shape them all at once. Next, I cut the stems off of all three near the base and I make the hole bigger and bigger, just a little at a time. So I get these to where they'll fit snug on the threads but so it doesn't go beyond the threads. And to ensure my lamp stands straight, I place a level on top of the wine glass. And I say one side is like completely off. So I use my hot knife to kind of even the difference. And I check my level again. And this time my bubble is in the center. So I glue everything in place. Now everything is ready to put together. So I go to the office to finish up. But before I start putting this together, I double check again to make sure I still have everything lined up and centered um, because I moved around a lot. The, you know, hot knife to create a couple of little holes um, on each side of the tongs, just big enough I could run zip ties through. And then I could really tighten down and secure the main support bar really, really good. Then I used my cutters to cut a dowel to fit inside of this shape inside of this shade so now the tongue and the dowel will crisscross giving this shade much better balance and support and then i added the other tongue on the third row and of course i you know glue in these and stuff as i go and to add even more security i use zip ties to tie down the top and bottom tongue so it took two zip ties per side and this was just perfect if secure i could even pick up the entire lamp just by holding on to the top tongue. And I really I did this because everything was just perfect. But um, I go back to kind of tighten up my zip ties. And I pulled a little too hard. And my bottom tongue broke. Because of the big humongous hole I made in the very center. So it broke right beside that. So then I had to go back and redo it. Nonetheless to add another light shining down so i used another wine glass with the stem cut off and i simply just glued that to the top tongue and i placed one light in the top you know shining down and the other light is on the other cup shining up now to give another little hint of glam i simply add some pretty shiny gems by tying a piece of fishing line on each jump ring and then i glue the line to the wine glass and i also use a little bitty tiny beauty tape just to reinsure each strand isn't going anywhere and then i turn my lamp lights on and my overhead lights off and this is the final project i think it's super versatile and can be made to fit any size and decorated really to match all kinds of styles i hope you enjoyed this project and hopefully alicia the subscriber who requested it likes this diy too i really appreciate you watching and um yeah stay tuned because this fall season i'm changing up my upload dates so check the description box in future videos for that i love you and happy crafting friend